You're listening to the Snob OS Podcast, the podcast for Apple snobs. Hey, this is Nika Momford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And uh, welcome to the Snobbish Show, the show for Apple snobs where we talk all things Apple and then some. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest pre-4th of July day off, Caesar salad day, cookout day, whatever you choose to celebrate. Uh, we definitely want to um, give you a show before we get into the time off uh, festivities. With that being said, we definitely thank you for your support of this show, your continued support, um, whether you listen to our free recorded show or whether you are a Patreon supporter. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, you can head on over to patreon.com slash snobboscast to watch the show live, get exclusive content, and get all the details about becoming a Patreon supporter. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into this week's show. We're going to kick it off with the lowdown where we talk all things Apple. And I wanted to kick it off this week. Um, Amazon Prime Day is coming up, the summer version. I think it's the 16th and the 17th of July. So I don't think, I think it's next week. I think it's next week. Any bit, in any event, um, Prime Day usually has some really good deals on a bunch of different stuff, but because this is the Snobbish Show, the Snobby West Show, and we are talking the lowdown, we're going to give you a little bit of heads up on um, deals that are specifically around Apple products. So there are quite a few products um, that will be available on Amazon Prime that are going to save you a little bit of money. May help for those of you who have maybe um, folks going into college, uh, going into high school, um, who need some devices, or if you just need something new. Uh, probably the biggest things um, that uh, have the best deals um, uh, MacBook uh, Air M3, you can save um, about 200 bucks. It's normally um, about $1,100. Well, no, it's a, uh, you save $100. Yeah, bucks. Just um, it's normally it's normally about almost 1100 bucks. You can get it for just under $1,000. Um, you can get the iPhone 15 Pro Max for, uh, is that 10 cents? A penny. Is that a penny? It's a penny. Yeah, you got to order it. Um, you gotta get it but you got to order it. Right. I was going to say, that's the caveat. You have to get it through Boost. Um, the Apple Watch Series 9, you can save about 100 bucks. It's normally uh, three, uh, 399 You can get it for $299. Uh, AirPods 2, normally 129 bucks. You can get that for 89 bucks via uh, Amazon. There are some other things um, on here that you can get. You can get an M2 Air. Um, you say about 150 bucks on that. Well, I'm, so I'm noticing, that... I'm noticing that the cheaper the product is, the more discounts you get, right? Um, mm -hmm. you've got AirPods that are almost a hundred dollars off, um, which mm -hmm. again, they're only 129, a hundred, you know, 199 to start with. Mm -hmm. But when you get up in the MacBooks, they're only offering like a hundred dollars off. And it's like, I'm mm -hmm. spending 11, $1,200. I would think I would get a little bit more than old funky hundred dollars, but I guess it's all relevant, especially if you're in the market for a, a yeah. MacBook. You get what you can get. If you're gonna buy something anyway, but this you is get, not. Maybe you can buy a little something. Right. Else. If I was in the market, sure. If this is not enticing me to go buy a MacBook, not incentive. If enough. I'm not in the market, right? A sale yeah. is like, ooh, I wasn't considering that, but since it's such a good deal, let me look into that. These MacBook Airs is yeah. like, nah, I'm not in the market and a hundred dollars is not going to move the needle any, any way. <laughs> yeah. Most of the deals are either around a hundred or 150. I did see, what was it? I think, uh, it was one that I saw, uh, the 16 inch, uh, MacBook pro, uh, M three. It's normally, uh, tw basically 2,500. You can get it for twenty two hundred, so that's about two hundred. But that's the biggest, um, the biggest, uh, you know, sale 
yeah. that I see. I wonder if this. On those. I wonder if it's because Apple's uh, margins are so small on the MacBooks mm-hmm. as opposed to any other product out there that they can only offer. Well, and it ain't even Apple; it's Amazon, right? So they, right. you can't even get these by going straight to Apple. If you go straight to Apple, they're like, I mean, we'll give you a gift regular card. price. We'll give you a twenty five dollar <laughs> gift card, but that's about it. You got to pay regular. You got to pay regular price up front first, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I think this is probably best suited for people who are already going to buy something, mm-hmm. um, already needed a product um, from Apple. Like I said, whether it be for somebody getting to go to school or a new business and you're already going to do this, you save a hundred bucks, maybe you get you an, a, a, an additional periphery, peripheral uh, with the hundred to two hundred dollars that you save. Mm-hmm. But um since Apple rarely has sales, I guess it's something. Not enough really for me to like say, ooh, yay. Um, but again, most sales these days, they jack up the price and then say, oh, we're going to give you right. 15% right. off, which is basically the price it was before. So I guess any discount is better than no discount. But, you know, that's what Amazon Prime is uh, offering for um for Apple products. And we'll definitely put the link in the show notes because um, there are uh, a couple of the um, devices that we didn't mention that you may be interested in that has, you know, a deal. But again, most of the um, monies off are between 100 and 200 bucks. So just depends. Mm -hmm. Next up, um, I didn't want to talk about AI this week, but it's inescapable. Uh, with that being said, we know um, that Apple Intelligence, um, Apple's version of AI, um, was announced at uh, WWDC um, to much fanfare. Everybody's kind of like, ooh, ooh, something new, something shiny. Um, there are also some concerns about the inclusion of using ChatGPT uh, for some of your searches. But again, we mentioned it asks you every single time if you want to use Chad GPT and you have to opt in every single time. So that gives you some layer of protection. But I think another layer that has been added is that um, Apple has um, a, a member of their executive staff who now has a seat on the board of OpenAI. It's not just a regular seat, it's an observer observer. Uh, role. Um, the company's current head of app store development, former marketing chief and all around hardware badass, uh, Phil Schiller, um, has been appointed to serve in that role on open, open AI. Uh, with this role, um, Schiller will be able to attend meetings at open AI, but the caveat is he does not have a, a voting seat And he cannot, um, quote unquote, influence. I added the quote unquote influence because I'm assuming, you know, anything is, it's all kind of negligible. It all, you can fudge a little bit, but officially he won't have a um, a, a voting membership and he won't have um, influence on board decisions the same way a typical board member will have. One thing to to note about this particular um, seat that has been added to the board for Phil Schiller, the current arrangement between Apple and OpenAI, which I was surprised to see, doesn't involve any type of financial transaction. So it appears that Apple's Apple Intelligent is using ChatGPT, but Apple is not getting any money from OpenAI. And the other thing to note is uh, Microsoft put in initially a billion and their commitment is for 10 billion to be put into OpenAI. They have the same type of observer role uh, board seat. So I don't know, I'll get your thoughts on it. Um, It seems to me that this may have been one of the caveats for um, Apple using uh, ChatGPT in their... um, Apple intelligence and a way to kind of protect 
Apple and maybe shield them from, you know, some shenanigans? Thoughts? Well, so, uh, yes, absolutely. It would open AI being on Apple's iPhones first, not exclusive, but first mm-hmm. was this was in return. Open AI would give Apple this observer seat, right? Again, it's not now I'm pretty sure they would have got Apple would have gotten more, maybe even a voting seat if open AI was exclusive, like as in there's no other AIs out there that would eventually get on. We got we've heard Microsoft is trying to get on, we've heard Google trying to get on. So worse uh, not worse. Um in the end, when Apple Intelligence rolls out on an iPhone, eventually I will have the option to choose OpenAI, Gemini, or Copilot, right? Mm-hmm. But OpenAI getting there first, <laughs> you do anything first, <laughs> that's going to be the default, you know, even if they add others, right? People are always going right. to default to OpenAI, even if they do have other options because OpenAI was there first. In return, they got this observer seat. What this observer seat means to me is this is basically, ooh, I'm telling. OpenAI does something, Phil Schiller is on that seat. Mm-hmm. Open AI has to discuss it with quote unquote the board while Phil Schiller mm-hmm. can't say nothing and say, Hey, that ain't right. Hey, we should do this. Hey, you know, maybe we should think of this. Basically it's like, Ooh, I'm telling. And then Phil Schiller runs right back to Apple and say, Hey, open AI is doing this, that, and the third over, over and y'all get ready. This is what coming down the pike. So therefore Apple yeah. has ahead of time notice on any new developments, whether they be good or bad, you know, open AI mm-hmm. does this dope thing that is going to drive this, that, and the third mm-hmm. Apple knows that ahead of time. So they can kind of leverage that. And in reverse, <laughs> if there's a shakeup that happens, something crazy is going on in open AI, you know, a business or a deal falls through, Phil should look and run to Apple and say, yo, this is coming prepare yourselves yeah. so that's pretty, you won't believe this right, right. So basically <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm telling c at uh open right. AI's board which again apple definitely wants that because we've said it time and time again we've reported on it before you know open ai ain't the you know most sturdiest you know company out there they've had some shakeups they've had some issues so apple was definitely like nah we ain't we gonna insulate like you said this is also a way to insulate ourselves from the badness if yeah. something breaks down because we'll be able to get ahead of it versus finding out, you know, when the news reports on it versus finding out when the board finds out about it. That's a, that's enough of a leeway for them to try to insulate yeah. themselves and do some damage control. If in fact something happens, I'm not saying it will, but you know, Apple is one of those companies that like, you to, never know. They don't play that. They like to hedge their bets. So having this seat, this observer seat gives them a little bit of a leeway if something does go down. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of kill switch <laughs> in mm-hmm. Apple intelligence mm-hmm. that somebody clicks a button mm-hmm. and cuts off the chat GPT pipeline. Right. I would not be surprised if they have some sort of tool that's like, you know what? It's getting a little bit uh, funky over there. We don't want any parts of that. Let's just turn this off real quick until they figure out what's going and on and the fact that but, and the fact that open ai is not deeply integrated into apple intelligence it's just a right. option to then it's an add on right to then reach out to uh chat gpt to get some additional information there's no information that's going to be shared and i'm pretty sure open ai was pushing for deeper integration to where any data Absolutely. any data that i share with open ai was going to be able to be trained or collected or whatever the case may be to get their hands on apple data right, oh my god right. they were probably salivating right and apple's like nah but what we can do is do this and in return you know we need that we yeah. need that uh that seat you know so yeah yeah yep um okay the last thing that i had i wanted to try to keep um the show a little bit light this week because um it's been some pretty heavy stuff uh going on uh around the world. Um, and I saw this particular, um, article and I thought it was so funny because it's something It's like, what people actually, uh, research this and have the data on this, but of course they do. Uh, apparently, um, there's a world's most unpopular emoji list. 
Uh, I know uh, many of us use emojis, even though I just found out today that um, Gen Z doesn't like using emojis or reaction gifts. It gives them the ick. Which, I think which, that's surprising. Which, which age group is Gen Z? Because I don't keep up with none of that. I keep up with all these Gen Z, the millennial, Gen X stuff, just as much as I keep up with horoscopes. <laughs> and I don't keep up with those at I, all. <laughs> I think Gen Z technically starts at 1996, but they call themselves kind of like Xennials call them. Uh, they're kind of like the, the in-between between. Yeah, Xennials. It says generation, in like it says generation Z is the name given to a generation of people born between 97 and 2012. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the peak people that, um, folks are trying to advertise. So surprisingly, the three, uh, uh, least popular emojis are the okay symbol, the flush face, which is my, I call it though, WTF face and the celebration, uh, emoji that I call praise hands. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm surprised praise hands are aren't popular anymore. Did they say why? Are they just because of usage? Is it usage or do So it's it's usage and they did it um worldwide, um which is uh very interesting. Um but it just says let me find out the go back to the exact cri- criteria. So it says that um, they did a study and they were also, they uh, meaning um, uh, it's a creative subscription service called Superside. Um, And uh, it said that they were shocked that some of the most popular, once popular emojis are now on the downside uh, globally. And... um, they're saying that they used um, the used words. They they basically looked through people's usage from 2013 to present day and analyzed which have um, fallen in rank. So they pulled the top the hundred most popular from that time frame of 2013 to basically, I'm assuming maybe 2023, because we now have the results. Um, And that's how it determined which of the uh, emojis had the highest probability of quote, going in extinct. Um, So they searched for the least in every country in the world and popular cities across the US to learn which ones were following were fail, falling in favor by region. So those are the top three. And um, apparently they did a top, uh, what is it? A top five, uh, a top, um, I'm trying to pull up the, well, why you do that? the list. Why you do that? I will say this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because the I, I, they the story that you had linked to uh. the other story as to why um, uh, people or kids the Generation Z are saying emojis in general aren't cool anymore, mm-hmm. but they don't mm-hmm. give any sort of reason as to why they're not cool. One girl is quoted to say. My mom doesn't even use that one anymore. Well, that's not a reason as to why it's unpopular. It's just like, I don't know if this is shoddy. Um, um, uh, journalistic I think it work. comes. I don't know. I think it comes down. To, I think it comes down to usage. I think they're looking to see. But isn't this how all uh, trends are determined? They ask like the young kids because they're supposed to be the most in the know what on end? what's yeah uh-huh. to what's going on. But yeah, so it's interesting. So these are, if you're listening, sorry, you can't see it. We'll put the link in the show notes. These are the top um, 14 emojis that um, are least in- the least cool. Uh-huh. Um, I see the prayer hands again, all like the I time. Said- well, because we use it for different things. We use it for praise hands, which again, I, uh, 
even though it's not the intended use, yeah, it's still being used. That's what we use it for. Right. right. That's what we use it for. And the other thing is it, it kind of like it, it, in the article, it mentioned, um, you know, the ones that were, um, that were, it was, it was broken down by popular cities, um, in, in, you know, the U S and I, the way they did, I'm showing it on the screen, the way they did the U S is kind of interesting. So it looks like for Atlanta, the least popular emoji is the peace sign and the two pink hearts. You know, you got the it's kind of like, I call it the mama, the mama hearts, the mama heart and the baby heart. So you got the big heart and then you got the little heart that's right on top of it. Mm-hmm. But overall in most of the U S it's the, the emoji, the emoji that is kind of like the winking that is the least, uh, popular, uh, in the whole country, which is weird. It's like the smirk like wink it's it's very interesting it's very interesting it's very stupid <laughs> <laughs> it is very uh, stupid and it is very light and it's very funny and i think we needed a little bit of levity uh on the show this week because there is lots of stuff uh going around um in our environment society whatever you want to call mm. it so i thought this i saw this and i was like this is this is <laughs> this is kind of funny <laughs> but who takes the time to do a whole study basically a 10-year study on the most popular and least popular well, emojis well i will say if i were to surmise i think the what i've ex- observed is the most popular emojis seem to be the emojis that are used for something else other than what they were their intent. Their intent. So you think of the eggplant emoji, you think of the Georgia peach mm. emoji, you know, those are for some totally different body parts right, and <laughs> eggplants and peaches. Right. I think, right. I think people get a kick out of similar to memes, similar to gifts that people get a kick out of taking something and creating using it in a different manner that that then takes off and that becomes now the de facto thing right similar yeah. to like we call band-aid like the 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 one that is technically supposed to be a high five but we use it for prayers up right right stuff like that <laughs> right that, those <laughs> right. T- those tend to be uh the ones that seem to be used the most across you know social media text yeah. messages things of that yeah. nature but even still though uh, the most unpopular, not necessarily aren't the un- most unpopular because they are used differently and we now don't agree with the way they be. I could see if like a Georgia peach, right? Mm-hmm. People don't like it now because we have moved away from our um, our um, fantasizing of big butts, right? Now mm-hmm. big butts are all the rage. Women are in the gyms doing squats, all this stuff to people getting BBL getting surgery. Right. So now <laughs> I can see why Georgia peach is yeah. super popular. Now, yeah. when we've kind of moved away from that, now we move to another body part like arms or yeah. whatever, or head or whatever. And then we find yeah. another emoji t- for that to represent. I can <laughs> see why Georgia peach now is not popular because trends yeah. have moved away from the thing that was being used for. That ain't yeah. this. <laughs> so I don't know. No. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey. I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, and I think it's uh, a good way to kind of close out um, the lowdown this mm-hmm. week. Because again, like I said, I did not want to talk about AI, but <laughs> it's we did hard not to talk about AI. Anymore. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. Um, let's head over to Second String where we talk all other tech. And guess what? We're talking about right. AI again. It's hard, man. Yeah. It's so hard, Mm -hmm. but I thought this particular story was interesting because I saw it originally on my Twitter feed uh, because people were kind of freaking out a little bit. Uh, Figma, which is probably one, if not the most, one of, um, uh, if not the most, one of the most popular um, tools that people use for 
um, UX and design. Oh, okay. Well, so pretty much most companies who have to create apps, this is what they use to design their apps. It's a collaborative tool. You can invite people to come in on projects and this is what the girlies are using to design their apps and whatnot. Well, um, they, they had their version of WWDC, their conference or whatever that announced their new products. And they, um, announced this new AI tool called make designs. And what this new tool does is it allows users to create mockups of apps using generative AI. So the thought process is, Hey, we want to create an app. We don't want to completely start from scratch. Let's type in some text and uh, see what it spits out. And then we can kind of go from there. Well, what happened is um, Andy Allen, he is the CEO of Not Boring Software. Mm-hmm. Um, and he went um, up and, and said, hey, you know, guys, mm-hmm. just a heads up. He said, quote, just a heads up to any designers using the new Make Designs feature this that you may want to uh, thoroughly check existing apps or modify the results heavily so that you don't, uh, so that you, so that you don't unknowingly land yourself in legal trouble. He says that because the tool was used and it made a near replica of Apple's weather app. Mm -hmm. So you're using this tool to say, Hey, let me mock up an app real quick Mm -hmm. that I'm going to develop. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to be careful because you could be uh, going into proprietary copyrighted um, zones because apparently this, 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 the app, the design that it created, it was nearly identical to um, Apple's weather map. So, so. so what it sounds like is happening is back in the day, which wasn't a very long time ago, people are upset that mm-hmm. open AI Microsoft, all the big players are scraping the internet and they're mm-hmm. using possibly copyrighted data to train their AI, right? So that's the whole argument right. against AI right now is artists are concerned, creators are concerned that all of yeah. their information that they've shared across the internet is being used by with without their consent and to profit yeah. off of from these larger AI, generative AI creators, right? So you take right. that and uh, apply it to this. And what it sounds like is this make, what is it called? Make, make, make designs. designs. is scraping the app store, <laughs> Apple's app store and pulling maybe even, not even Apple's app store, it's scraping Apple apps and is using that to train its own AI. So then when you and I come back around and say, enter prompt, prompt, prompt to create this markup. Mm. It's scraping that data that is trained off of Apple's native apps, <laughs> which is. So the interesting, the interesting part of that, mm. what you just said, uh, kind of flows into the next thing. So the, the, uh, the, the writer of the article that this comes from in the verge, he said he specifically and directly asked the Figma CTO, Chris Rasmussen mm. was this make designs trained on Apple's app designs. And he said, quote, we did no training as a part of the generative AI features. The features are quote, powered by off the shelf models and bespoke design and a bespoke design system that we commissioned, which appears to be the underlying issue. So, it sounds like they're going to kick this can a little down the road and say, yeah, it's our bad, but technically not really our bad because this isn't our software. We use the COTS products and contracted the work. <laughs> they subcontracted the work and this is making them a little bit more sketchy because it's like, so you're this huge company and you outsourced your newest, biggest, latest, greatest feature. The Figma CEO, uh, Dylan Field also says that in, in his own threads post, because as you can imagine, this kind of caught fire, especially in the design community. He said the make designs feature quote is not trained on Figma content, community files, 
are app designs. And he noted that the accusations around data training in this tweet are false. So he's basically saying, people start saying, well, are you basically using our designs, our meaning people who use Figma Mm -hmm. to create Mm -hmm. their own apps? Mm -hmm. So are you saying that someone alleged or made the inference that, oh, since they're, you know, if they can copy Apple, then they must be using our designs as well our data, which they have stored on their servers for us to create our, to create our apps. Maybe they're scraping it. Maybe we'll see some of our stuff, uh, you know, duplicated from someone else. And he was like, no, 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 no. We promise we do not. We didn't go to apples. We we're not scraping apples data. Mm -hmm. We're not scraping your data. Mm -hmm. We don't know where (laughs) this came from. (laughs) So therefore we're not liable. That's something. Right, which is something you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. But uh, it did also say in the article that the the key AI models um, that power make designs are OpenAI's GPT.4.0. That's crazy. And Amazon's Amazon's Titan Image Generator G1. So it's using scrape data from scrape data? Is that what you're saying? From two different, from two different scrape data vendors. So, so open AI and Amazon. So this is the definition of robots training robots basically is what this <laughs> is. That's where we're headed. Yeah. This is where the yeah. future of artificial intelligence is headed. That companies are, are just training their data off of other companies, trained data off of other companies, trained data off of some data that they scraped off the internet, which was, stolen and lifted off of some poor schmucks hard work <laughs> that they wanted to yeah. show off on the internet. That's where we're going. That's yeah. where we're headed. I'm, it I'm, sounds like I'm it. Out. And that's why I want to pull, even though I didn't want to talk about AI, when I saw this, I was like, I think it's a conversation worth having because it gets to the crux of the issue around AI and generative AI. Who is controlling what's being scraped? Because if it's on the internet, you know, the internet lives forever. Mm-hmm. And they're going and they're taking proprietary copyrighted data because it's on the internet. And it's not, it's on the internet. It's not artificial if it's already created and it ain't, it, right. it ain't intelligent. It ain't intelligent if it ain't created by itself for itself. <laughs> right. And it's just like, right. Again, it goes, so they, it goes to my point to where we've got a long way to go before this is legitimately artificial intelligence. They can call it generative AI, they can call it AI if they want to, but it ain't artificial if somebody else created it first. (laughs) Right. And two, it ain't intelligent if it couldn't have done it by itself. Right. So as of now, um, the tool has been pulled. Of course it has. And um, honestly, I think it's probably going to be shelved indefinitely because if they can't figure out how to explain where the data came from, how to explain (laughs) when you type in, I want to make a weather app and they basically give you near identical, Mm -hmm. hard to tell the difference between one of probably the most well-known apps from one of the most well-known companies. If it can do that, God help, you know, you know, the small, Mm -hmm. um, the small business owner, the person who's doing app design that has an outfit of one to two people, Mm -hmm. a startup even, because if you think about this, if they're scraping this data, what if you haven't, um, submitted your patent documentation yet? And this, and another company uses it, gets it and uses it first. Well, what's going to happen? How do you, well, what, what I envision happening is artists and creators, whether they be creating like physical images or creating apps or sharing their data, you know, think of open source where people mm-hmm. are co- collaborating to create a thing. Mm-hmm. They're going to stop doing it. They're well, not, they're not going to stop doing it. They're going to they're stop gonna, putting it on the internet and they're going to stop sharing. It's not going it, to be digital anymore. Which it's going to go back to drafting tables. <laughs> the whole point of the internet is to share yeah. data, and nobody's going to share with people across the world. With, and yeah. nobody's going to share data if they think it's going to then be stolen and used for yeah. profit. Yeah. And that's yeah. gonna, it's going to snowball into something else. And I I don't want that. You know, so if I got to choose, you know, people sharing and collaborating and discussing and communicating over the Internet versus this new 
new age artificial intelligence thing that they're calling and it's unlimited. Nah, give me the, give me the devil that I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I think this is a great use case to highlight the potential issues with this, because if I am a company, if I am a consumer of a company and you tell me that you have a new feature, but you haven't fully vetted it yourself, you're passing it off as yours, which is your right to do, especially if you paid for it. But did you not, did they not do their due diligence on this and just trust it that the people said, Hey, this is what you wanted. This is what you get. Put it in your, put it in your, um, in your system and go, because you can't tell me that something this blatant was thoroughly vetted and tested before it rolled out. You can't, you can't tell me that. And my thing is that would be my concern is how are you doing business? Like, is my other data safe? Like what else y'all got going on that you're not really telling us about? Am I safe using your product? Um, and it just really, like I said, I think it really just highlights some of the issues that come with this type of technology. And it even further highlights that there aren't any protections for the people who are creating this. Um, our government hasn't quite caught up to where the technology is. I think they're working towards it. But again, that machine moves a lot slower than real time innovation. And it's one of those things where once the genie's out of the bottle, you you can't put it back in so easily. So what does that say for the future of, of any type of innovation if you aren't able to, um, you know, protect it? The only thing you can do is just pull it. Right. So I don't know. Like I said, I think this particular piece of technology is going to um, likely remain shelved because you're using two different um, sources and nobody can seem to tell you um, how it got to where it is. Right. So, so yeah. All right, let's head on over to For the Culture where we talk all um, things social, um, whether it be movies, entertainment, culture, politics, all those things. Um, and honestly, just stuff we kind of see on the internet that, or things that we see around us that we just want to talk about. And um, I wanted to, again, reiterating, keeping it light because we've had a very interesting week uh, in this country. Um, and so if you're a Patreon supporter, you would have gotten our um, really, our a lot of our thoughts around um, what happened here in Atlanta, which was the presidential debate um, that were held, uh, like I said, right here in Atlanta, um, downtown um, at CNN. Well, one thing that black Twitter and black people are going to do is take something serious and make it wholly unserious and entertaining. So during the presidential debate, which I didn't technically watch. I kind of watched it on social media because I didn't want that to eat my brain. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in one part of the debate, um, the former president uh, indicated that black jobs were being taken by immigrants. Right. And so that set off a whole chain of black job. Right. Do I got a black job? What's a black job? Right. So who has a black job? Right. So basically <laughs> what Trump was doing is he was trying to pitch the idea that you should vote for me because I'm going to stop immigrants that are coming over the border and are quote unquote, like, like Nick mentioned, <laughs> taking these <laughs> black jobs. And of course, mm -hmm. like Nika mentioned, we don't take <laughs> nothing serious. So we, we nope. ran, ran with it, which again, yeah. in all seriousness, you know, there is no, or I'd be interested to know 
what he really meant or what is the breakdown of the reason for saying a black job, right? Because, and the reason why I say that is because if it is true, it is very not, it's very damning that Trump and other conservatives or whomever who have supported this believe that the only black jobs, true black jobs out there, and I say air quotes when I say true, is <laughs> lower wage mm-hmm. support, low income, low uh, low intelligence, low intelligence, menial. menial yeah. Uh, a blue collar labor, yeah, b- b- sub blue collar because I, I don't want to, you know, call blue collar some sort of degenerate, you know, low end sub that, yeah, you know, those are the only jobs that the majority of black folks in America can get. Can obtain. So, by yeah. definition, since most of those jobs are held by black people, those are black jobs. That is so yeah. disrespectful. That it yeah. has to be funny. That we have to yeah. take it and make it funny and make all these social media posts. So that's why yeah. that, I just wanted to say that it's so yeah. disrespectful. And you can't tell me that you can spin that in a positive direction. At uh, all. So we have to make it funny. We have to laugh at it because it's so disrespectful. If that was the true intent behind it, that it's laughable. So we got to be funny. We got to laugh it off because any other way to look at it is depressing. (laughs) And because, you know, this is what unfortunately we've had to do as black people. We've had to take our pain and make it funny or find some sort of humor to it because we just get the short end of the stick so many times. And, and to pit, black folks against Latinos and other immigrants. Other brown people. Other That's a whole other argument. It's like, come on, man. Wake up. For real. For real though. For real. Right. What are we talking because about? Some, because some because some of the jokes were I don't know, I follow Kev on stage mm-hmm. and um they have a Hispanic person who works at his studios mm-hmm. and he had the NAACP award in his office. So he come he has the NAACP award and he gives it back to to Kevin and um his co-host mm-hmm. and say, you know, I kind of took this black job, so I think you should have right. the because, the the statue. He's a black, and yeah, you know, it is just uh, for a black company. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see people, I saw a couple of um Afro Latino people saying like, so did I take the black job right. or do I have the black job? Right. Because again, people are multicultural. Mm-hmm. So people kind of cross both, uh, have both um, ethnicities. So how does it work? But, um, you know, Twitter does what Twitter does. And it made some some really uh, funny jokes. Um, there are some people who are more, I won't say on the serious side, but we're on the less unserious side where they were, you know, doc, I think it was, I saw three was like a, a, a rocket scientist or it was like some, like some super intelligent, like STEM job. And it was like, just us at our black job. Uh, or then, you know, people was like, I think one of them I saw was like, um, you know, how I feel when I have to tell my black friends that I got a white job. And so it's just one of those things where trying to, you know, find some hilarity, some unseriousness because the topic itself, like you said, you have to make fun of it because it's so asinine. It, mm-hmm. it's so like far away from making sense that the only way that it does make sense is that it's a joke. Mm-hmm. It has to be. So, uh, um, it had to have been joking. It has to be. He couldn't have actually right. meant, he couldn't have been he, serious. He couldn't have meant that as like a ploy to get black people on his side. There's no way he meant that. There has to be a deep cut joke that he made 20 years ago and he's bringing it back because he's just fed up with this whole debate thing. And so let me just throw some jokes out there. There's no way he could have been serious. There's no way. No way. No way he could have been serious. Um, But uh, I don't know if you looked at, um, if you saw anything on social media, if you had any of that, you know, really gave you a chuckle, but. um, Just just the general uh, black folks like being on, on alert at their job for these 
immigrants or these Latino whomever he was referring to that are coming to take their jobs like on high alert, like, you know, yeah. head on the swivel, you know, whatever tool that they're using, they they don't put it down, you know, those type of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it was funny. I I had a good job, a good a good time with the black job commentary. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I also uh Roy Wood Jr. and uh Corporate Aaron who was Lisa Beasley, mm-hmm. they did um a whole kind of like um they had a a black job job fair um in character. Mm-hmm. And um it was pretty funny um because of how corporate Aaron is. And of course the hilarious, you know, Roy Wood Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had like some people come in, like they had one guy who was like, I'm interviewing for one. And one other person, she was like, I'm an HR person as well. So it was really, it was really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, with everything that went on um, during that election and post uh, during that, um, that debate and post debate, um, you know, finding some levity and being able to laugh uh, you know, with other like-minded people, uh, I thought that was uh, a really good way to spin and turn the narrative and the tide on such a depressing uh, time last week. Yeah. So uh, I put a link in the show notes to Bossup, which is a black gossip site uh, that had some of the funniest ones. If you not, if you aren't in the Black Twitter Collective and you didn't see some of these, um, they highlighted about fifteen of the different um black job jokes so Mm -hmm. uh you can check that out too all right let's head on over to the hookup for our tech tip of the week all right so for all those folks who are upset at apple for releasing that macbook with that butterfly keyboard that eventually started breaking and you had to go in and send your macbook into apple multiple times for getting keys replaced or getting the whole keycap replaced itself multiple times. Uh, there's been a settlement in the MacBook keyboard litigation settlement. So my hookup for the week is if you have purchased a MacBook, I want to say between the years of, and I just had it up. So let me go back and look. It was 2015 and 2019. 2015 to 2019, if you purchase, you got to got to do two things. You can't have only purchased a MacBook between those dates. You have also have had to take it to Apple to get either individuals' keys replaced or the whole keycap replaced. They are offering a sell- settlement up to a maximum of three hundred and ninety five dollars that you should get. You can get from Apple. Now you have to do it by August of 2024. So you've got. Maybe a little basically next right, month. <laughs> you've got about a month to uh, submit your claim. But if you do fit those two qualifications, you can go to the MacBoard MacBook keyboard litigation settlement website for more details and to submit a claim. And we will make sure to put a link in the show notes so you can actually click through and get to that website to where you can make that claim. Cool. I hope some of you get some money back. Yeah, and so I have one of those key MacBooks in my house and I didn't have any problem. You know, I bought it for my wife Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure I bought it back in 2019. Uh, It has the butterfly keyboard and what the butterfly keyboard is that the keyboard that has that short, short throw to where when you press the key down, it doesn't travel very far at all. Apple said, Oh, this is the newer way to type. And people complained that it felt like typing on glass. People are just, uh, I didn't have any problems with it. (laughs) <laughs> but people are people and, you know, you, uh, yeah. not used to change, did not did yeah. push back for, I mean, the people spoke, they pushed back against the glad, the butterfly keyboard. And to, again, to make matters worse, like I mentioned, it had problems. So you add those yeah. two things up, Apple changed their mind. And the next MacBooks after that had a regular feeling keyboard and they pretty much, you know, ghosted the whole butterfly technology that I can remember Apple <laughs> at the Apple event where they announced that keyboard. I mean, they was, Oh, mm-hmm. the throw is shorter. It's more natural. You don't have to yeah. type as hard and it's get a more natural feedback and all the things that they pushed out there. The people, <laughs> the people was like, we do not nope. like it. No, we don't like it. You can keep it. And then <laughs> at insult to injury, it wasn't working. 
<laughs> so <laughs> just hit the hits keep coming right. so all that say, <laughs> for this keyboard so apple ditched that and now they've gotten to the point to where they are offering settlements so definitely get your money i didn't have any problem with it you know like i said i bought it for my wife now my my oldest daughter has that macbook and it's going strong no problems whatsoever but if you did have those issues you know you can get a little get a little change back in your pocket all right. Um, that's going to wrap up the show this week. Brother Tech, where can the people find you? Sure. You can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B R O T H A T E C H. And you can find me at Tech Savvy Diva everywhere. And with that, we want to definitely thank you for tuning into the show this week to comment, to connect, to share, to support the show. Head on over to snubwestcast.com to get all of the details. We will see you guys next week. Happy cookout day. Peace. Bye, everybody. <laughs>